Private Lender Podcast, Episode 28. The Private Lender Podcast quote of the day comes to us from Thomas Jefferson, who said, Never spend your money before you have earned it. This is the Private Lender Podcast, the show that shares practical advice and know-how for new and seasoned lenders, from private mortgages on single-family houses to joint ventures on commercial projects and beyond. Discover details about investment vehicles that you won't find at your local bank or online broker. Listen and learn from private lenders and real estate investors, as well as from professionals and entrepreneurs, as they share the details, strategies, and the insight that allows for successful and prosperous lending. Now, get ready to increase your ROI. Here's your host, Keith Baker. Greetings, Lender Nation, and welcome to the Private Lender Podcast, the show dedicated to helping you mitigate investment risks in the realm of private lending. My name is Keith Baker, and this is episode number 28. Today, I'll be speaking with Sammy Gupta, who shares his story of investing in single-family homes, the strategy that helped him survive the Great Recession, and how he developed an app to help investors purchase tax foreclosure properties. But first, let's get to a little bit of housekeeping. Housekeeping? Housekeeping. I'd like to invite you to come out and say hello to me at the next 713 RIA meeting on Thursday, July 12th, 2018 at the Holiday Inn at 125 Airtex and I-45 North. Then I'll be at I'll be having a free holding a free class on becoming a private lender on Tuesday, July 17th, 2018, and it'll be held at the Rich Club at 1001 West Loop South. Did I mention that it's free? And actually, both 713 RIA on Thursday the 12th and my class at the Rich Club, are both free, and they're both in Houston, just for clarification. And then the Big Daddy, August 25th and 26th, I'll be at Quest IRA Self-Directed IRA Expo, the first of its kind ever, in Dallas, Texas. Don't forget to use promo code BAKEREXPO for a 25% discount off your tickets. You can go to privatelenderpodcast.com forward slash events for more information and the links to all of these events. And I hope to see all three of you at one of these events in the very near future. So before we get into the heart of the show, let's go ahead and thank our sponsor. The The Private Private Lender Lender Podcast Podcast is sponsored by... 713 RIA invites you to come out and experience one of the fastest growing RIA groups in the greater Houston area. The goal of 713 RIA is to provide quality information to every level of investor. The organizers Landon Rothstein and Ray Sasser have found that no matter where you are in the investing process, those investors who effectively network are far more successful than those who don't. And 713 RIA is geared to help you both get the information you need and provide the networking that will propel your investing. For more information, please visit 713RIA.com. That's 713REIA.com. Okay, before we get to the heart of the show and the interview with Sammy Gupta, I'd like to take a moment or two and say thank you to a couple of people who have reached out to me over the last few weeks and offered words of encouragement, uh, advice, suggestions, uh, some constructive criticism for the podcast. Uh, but most uh, most importantly, the, uh, the the kind words and the encouragement uh, I, I greatly appreciate. So to Bill in Memphis, Tennessee, I want to say thank you for reaching out and, and having a great conversation with me on, on the telephone about private lending and, and, and some books. I've already, uh, I've already got the one you mentioned about self-directed IRAs, and I'll be putting it, putting it on the book list uh, on the Private Lender Podcast website in the very near future. And then I'd also like to say thanks to James in the Kima Seabrook, Texas area, who reached out to me, and we actually set up a lunch and were able to meet and talk about private lending and his, his investing strategies and he also, uh, as, as well, gave me some uh, very kind words and, and encouragement. So I want to say thank you uh, to both to James and, and to Bill and to anyone out there. If, uh, please reach out to me on social media or you can email me at info at privatelenderpodcast.com. So as we move towards the interview with uh, Sammy Gupta, I want to apologize. We, there were some audio issues during the recording. They're not horrible, and I certainly didn't want to scrap the interview uh, but there are a couple of spots you'll hear where it just sounds digitized and there was a long pause. I've, I've done my best to go back in and, and clean it up a, as best I can. So it's a, a cohesive interview and a cohesive conversation. But alas, uh, I studied the, the philosophy in college. So I'm really not an audio technician, but I did do my best. So please bear with me as we get to the interview with Sammy and I hope you enjoy it. Here we go. 
With us today is Sammy Gupta, a local Houston area real estate investor and also an app developer, which we'll get into later. But I just want to say, Sammy, welcome to the Private Lender Podcast and thanks for coming on today. Thank you, Keith, for having me on. Uh, This is a great opportunity to um, talk about uh, what we have done with the app. Great. Yeah, no, I, um, I'm very excited to have you on. Uh, but before, before we get into uh, this really cool app that's been developed, or you've developed, I should say, um, tell us about your real estate investing background. Give us uh, kind of a 30,000 foot view of when you got started and what, uh, what type of investing you've done in the past and continue to do. Sure. Um, so I have been investing in Houston real estate since 2005 um all these years i have me actually and my team we have done fix and flip buy and hold some wholesaling owner financing um all in single family properties in the houston area you know houston is such a huge market so um we have seen ups and downs of the real estate as well. Um, As probably most of uh, the listeners may know, with the financial crisis of 2008, uh, there was a huge real estate bust. So we have treaded uh, or or faced some challenges ourselves in the real estate market. But uh, we came out more than what we expected as to the uh, we we actually had really really good results of even during the financial crisis um so we have been now what about 13 years in the real estate market well that's good that you su- you, su- you survived the the great recession of of 08 which um which that leads me to two questions one uh, kind of just describe the Great Recession and and how what were you doing prior to two thousand eight and then as as the downturn and the the financial crisis unfolded how how were you and, and your team uh, what what maneuvers did you make to to stay successful because you know a lot of people got wiped out in oh eight oh nine so I'm I'm curious as to uh, if you could let us in a little bit on your secret sauce as to uh, how you survived sure sure. Um, it- since uh, 2005, we were mainly doing buy and hold. So we would buy properties or distressed properties, which were um, which had about 20 to 30 percent equity. Uh, we would rehab the property and rent them out. So that was a basic philosophy of uh, gaining uh, mail money or envelope money or mailbox money. Um, so. We had acquired about, I would say, 30 to 40 properties in those years. Um, the interest rates were a little bit high, but uh, not that that we could. Uh, but the good thing about that was we were getting 90% financing during those days. Um, so when 2008 financial crisis came out, uh, what we saw was um, an opportunity to buy more. Um, however, our current holdings, um, we, we held on to them till 2012, meaning we didn't, we didn't sell any. And our um, rents did not change. So, you know, we, we would still get our monthly rent money. We were still paying PITI. So all those were going great. Uh, so lucky for us, we didn't have at that time fix and flip strategies, but we did start on the fix and flip around 2008, 2009, when we saw a great opportunity. So what we started to do is when uh, the financial crisis uh, hit, we started actually buying distressed property, but with the intention of just holding them for three to four years. So, you know, we were uh, kind of doing some owner finance, Financing at that time, some rentals at that time, and when the market started to gain momentum in 2012, we started to um, 
dispose of all our assets after 2012. And the market, as uh, most of us know, has been rising since then for the last six years. So, you know, we were, I would say, partially lucky and partially it was a good strategy to be in such a great market. Well, it, it, I would say having a great strategy goes a long way to helping you being lucky. <laughs> you know, uh, you put you position yourself in the right way. And it sounds like you guys did. Uh, certainly. I mean, you're, you're buying when everyone else was fearful. And that um, sounds like it's proven uh, to be a good strategy for you guys. Um, real quick, I, I wanted you, you mentioned your team. I was wondering if you could just tell the uh, tell us who who's on your team. How many people? What you know? How how do you divvy up the uh, responsibilities amongst sure, each other? Sure, good question. Uh, um, you know, to be in to be a really successful real estate investor, I think a team or a good team is super important. Um, you know, we have from the beginning, I would say, uh, since we've been investing, um, hired so team team. Let me back up a little bit. Team consists of two parts. One is the professionals in your team, meaning um, your um, uh, you may have an attorney for doing owner financing stuff. You may have a title company that you close with on a regular basis. You may have um, you know loan closers and loan officers on a team. Those are all professionals, right, or accountants uh, for that matter. But on the other hand, we um, also started to build up a team, the people who would work and who would have the similar interests like us or who have the similar dedication like us. So these are the people that um, joined our team. So we had uh, a construction um, person who knew a lot about rehabs. So again, that's a complementary skill. My, my skill was acquisitions. And my skill is, um, again, uh, you know, once it's rehabbed and it's time to sell, my skill is to sell. But the acquisition, you know, from acquisition to uh, rehabbing of the property to renting of the property to selling of the property, you need multiple players in that. So then we have a person who does property management for us, for rentals. Then we have a person who specializes in owner financing only. So the, he, he deals with RMLOs and he deals because, you know, there's a, being in Houston, there's a huge Hispanic market for owner financing. So we have that person in our team. So we are about uh, f- uh, five people now. And within five people, we have divided up our tasks pretty well. Each of us us uh, trust each other and that's one of the most important factors of being in a team absolutely no trust is 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 very key absolutely so okay that's that's um i was curious about your your team because that's it's one of the things i kind of impress on people as whether you're an investor or a lender you 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 need to surround yourself with with good people and having that team ready to give advice or to take action certainly uh is is a one of the clear paths to to success. So, you mentioned owner. Uh, excuse me. You mentioned owner financing, and so I'm curious how in the in the past 13 years, how you and your team have have you utilized much private money for your acquisitions and, and your investing? Sure. Um, you know, uh, obviously there are multiple ways to. Uh, get financing. One is the stand banks, which are national banks and some are local banks. So each of them would have different terms. Uh, another category of getting financing is through local loan sources, meaning um, you know you could get a hard money loans. Um, and that, that I would say hard money loans, a lot of people who are getting started with is a good place to start because they would do a lot of work up front for you if a property uh, is a good property for them to buy because they would only loan on certain terms. They would do an appraisal for you. They would have professionals on their team. And then once you once you know you have done uh, say multiple hard money or other terms of financing, the best way that we have found to get financing is through private money. 
Um, so private money is money which we can acquire through people that we know or people who trust us. Uh, this could be our um, friends. Uh, and then obviously there's only so much, uh, you know, money that, that we can buy properties with. But what we have um, really found out that being in networking groups like the real estate groups or RIA groups, being members there, um, going to the meetings and shaking hands with real people really builds a huge trust. And, and, and that is when people start to at least look at you or shake hands with you. And then the next step is, you know, for them to understand what are you doing? How can their money help themselves and you? And that's where we have uh, gained a huge momentum. So, you know, I guess since, uh, since we have kind of started to invest. Um, so basically we have, acquired this big team of private investors that help us. So now the trust, again, we back to the trust, that trust is so much that um, we we have, we send them the, the terms and we, and they just kind of close with us with those terms. We have never defaulted on any of our loans. We have never, um, we have always returned the terms as expected. So, Private money is just, um, I think, one of a huge tool of any real estate investors if, if they want to be serious about investing. You know, I'm, I'm really glad you touched on that because I've got an episode that will be coming up and it's, it's not geared towards anyone who wants to private, be a private lender. It's geared to people who want to borrow from private lenders and how you should behave. And you, you touched on that perfectly. You, you, you know, you, you did, you performed as the agreement or what was dictated in the agreement. So, you, you know, you've never defaulted. Um, you know, one of my things is I always say, I always say, you know, make sure you have good communication with your, with your lender because things do go bump, you know, so it's, not everything goes smoothly. And it, as long as you communicate, I found that most lenders are willing to be uh, a little lenient if they're kept in the loop and they're, they're, they feel like they're taken care of. Whereas if they're left in the dark, then if you know if something goes into default, then the natural instinct is just go ahead and to uh, to foreclose or to to do whatever remedy is allowed for in the documents. But I I, I just want to I like that you you started meeting your lenders at RIA groups. You meet them face to face, shake hands, multiple contacts, multiple times, and I just uh, something I really want to underscore uh, to the listener. Uh, but that, that's that's the best way. I mean, this you know, you know the old adage that you know real estate isn't about property; it's about people, and it's so true in in the story that you've just told us there. So um, I'm glad you brought, I'm glad you brought no, that. Oh well, yeah, I, I, yeah, I definitely agree on the communication part. Um, the communication is a huge factor. I think I think people just underestimate the the communication part of when they get or seek a loan or they are uh, handling the loan when there are bumps on the road. Um, obviously, uh, lenders, uh, they like to work or they would be a little bit more lenient if they understand the situation you describe. What they are looking at is, well, is, your, is the borrower's intention? What is the borrower's intention? Is the intention um, really to pay them back? Is the intention to really rehab the property in the best interest of the property itself. And once they really uh, get that intent uh, to some way of communication, it really helps both the parties. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I'm curious, uh, what, what type of terms do you, would you, do you normally find from hard money lenders? Not, I'm not sorry. I said hard money lenders, your private lenders. I know everyone's a little different. Everyone has a different tolerance, but is there a kind of like an average uh, that you see, you know, six months on the buying, the fix and flips, or your buy and hold. How, what kind of uh, length are you looking at for the different types of properties, and what type of uh, you know general terms? If you don't, and if you don't want to uh, advertise, I I understand because uh, you know Ron Legrand said he'll give you his wife before he gives you his private lender. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> as much as you can talk around that, 
and give us an, <laughs> give us an idea of of the terms of, of the different types of transactions. Uh, could you could you kind of walk us through that? Sure, sure. Um, so you know, uh, I would like to share that. Um, when we started doing private lending, our ter- the terms were a little bit stringent, meaning uh, the lenders were obviously asking, uh, you know, between 12 to 18 percent of uh, interest um, with, with, you know, um, a little bit equity stake of the deals. Um, however, as we have advanced and as we have proven ourselves, the terms have become better for us as a borrower. So what has happened is that, um, so to cut, well, these days I would say, we are getting around eight to 10% interest on on the borrowings, no equity stake. Um, and this is on six months. We will do six months, and if we're able to fix and flip within less than that, we would still give six month six month interest to the lender. So um, now there are some lenders. Obviously, they they don't want such. They say, well, it's it's not worth the time or it's not worth the effort to give a loan at such lower rate, uh, and that's fine. Uh, but you know what we have found and we tell our lenders is the more um, experience a borrower has in the real estate um, market, the lower the cost they are going to have on the lending terms. So a person who's entering the real estate business may may have to pay a little, may have to start with a higher interest rate and as you grow and as you build your teams and your trust and your uh, you know job profile the terms will get better and better and that's where we are today excellent success breeds more success and yeah you, you lower your costs down because as a private lender myself once i have a trust with somebody then i'm more comfortable pricing that risk that i have to to the lower amounts and one and two, if there is a trust with an investor, then having them keep my money, you know, having them keeping my money out there and working uh, is is very beneficial to me because I spend less time underwriting of the deal. And as long as I have open communication, then I'm going to go back to that that borrower and and continue to do so because it if it removes friction out of my life or my investing life, then to me that's that's who you want to be with. And as you said. The more and more experience the, the investor gets, the better they become at what they do, the bigger the trust that develops between the lender and the borrower. Uh, that's so true. I'm glad you touched on that. However, I, I want to switch gears now, but I understand, you know, you said communication is is key and I, I, I couldn't agree more, but there is one group that doesn't care whether you communicate with them or not. They just want their money. And that's the county appraisal district. <laughs> or I'm sorry, the uh, tax tax collector. Not the appraisal district, but the tax collector. And you've sourced a lot of deals from the county tax auctions. And now you you have developed a web app to help investors find, vet, and and secure properties from the tax auction. So could you could you tell us, just walk us into that, bring us into that that fold and how how this how this developed and and how it came about? Sure. Um, so we, like I said, we've been acquiring and selling uh, deals since for the last thirteen years. However, the last two to three years, the deals have been tight. Uh, what I mean by that is that um, on MLS. Um, or through our wholesalers, uh, the the margins have become skinnier and skinnier just because there is so much influx of, um, you know, hedge funds that have come to the Houston market who are buying properties. There is, uh, the supply is not as much. So what we have seen is that a great way to acquire property is through tax foreclosures. So for the past two, three years, we've been going to the tax foreclosures, 
we've been acquiring at the auction. And then we face some challenges as to uh, the research, what we need to do, and the steps that we need to follow, and what if we could acquire these properties pre-auction or pre-foreclosure. And we developed this web app in-house to help our team actually to go and um, go over the, all those hurdles to keep acquiring properties. And we, we were so successful at, at using this app among ourselves that we decided to release this to the public. And, and uh, you know, now that everybody can use this app. So uh, how, uh, what, what are the mechanics of it? How does, uh, how does the user, when they come on, now, is, it a, is it a downloadable app that you put it on your smartphone or is it a, a, it's a, it's a web app, I think you said, right? So any, any platform can use it, doesn't matter what device or where you're right, at? Right, right. So, so um, these days, um, folks are using... Uh, different devices, or, or, or they, they, you know, people are using from Windows phones to Apple iOS to Android phones to tablets to PCs. Doesn't matter. It's just multi devices. So, um, what uh, we thought about is instead of making it an actual app, which is a downloadable app, which needs to be upgraded all the time, or which needs to have a certain um, uh, minimum requirements by the uh, holders of the app, meaning it is all it is is it. You go to any browser up there. You can go to Safari. You can go to Chrome. You can go to uh, Firefox. You can go to any browser in any device and just type in the same web address, and it, the look and feel is going to be exactly the same. The functionality is going to be exactly the same, and you can you know uh, leave. You, pick up the phone and go to the app and then continue your work on your PC or anything that you want. Interesting. So uh, walk us through. So I, I go to the, I go to the website, I get into the app and um, how to, how to, what kind of walk us through uh, how, how you find deals or how you source them through this app. Sure. So um, when a user logs in, um, I believe I can give the name of the website. Okay, so oh, please do, uh, yeah. the the website is county tax sale app dot org. That's county tax sale app dot org. Um, you type it in any browser. The first step is to register. You can uh, re- register with your you create a username, password, and all that. Um, and once you log in, you will be taken to a very simple two buttons. The top one is find properties near you. And the other one would be find properties in your precinct. So say you do find properties near you. The app would recognize your geolocation. And again, like I said, uh, it could be a phone. It could be your PC or a tablet, whatever it is. Um, as long as you allow the uh, app or the browser to see your geolocation, it'll show you all the properties around you which are coming up for the next auction with the Harris County. Now, um, this uh, properties are on a map and you click on any pin, it's represent, each property is represented by a pin and a pop-up shows up. It'll show you a little picture of the property It'll show you what the adjudged value of the property is, what the bid value of the property is, uh, the precinct and address, and all that. You can even map it. You click on the address, it'll show you w- w- how to go to the, it'll pull up your uh, native mapping software and it'll take you to the address. It'll give you the owner information of the property. Um, so it gives you all that in your hands, on your phone, or on your PC. You don't need to actually be printing out papers. You don't need to be uh, writing any documents down or with paper or pencil. You don't need any of that. Uh, just with your phone, you have all that information. Now, what you could do is, say you're interested in 20 properties out of the 400 that are coming up 
for the next auction. And you would like to go ahead and uh, try to see if you can contact the owner before the auction, right? So you could put those 20 properties in your bucket by marking them favorite. There's a little hard button next to each property. And as soon as you click that heart, the property comes into your bucket or your favorites, basically. Now you have, now you can, if you want, you can download all the 20 properties in a CSV or an Excel file. It has own information. It has the mailing address of the owner, which may or may not be the same as the property address because, you know, some out of state owners, some are, uh, some are, it could be going through probate or, or there could be other reasons. Uh, you can contact the owners. You can give them an offer that uh, that you would like to make on the property. You could give them a loan, let's just say, to save their property to go to the auction. And another thing is that you have the opportunity to go look at the property from inside. So we give you all that information up front. And say you're still interested in the property but uh, didn't get the opportunity to contact the owner Yes, you can still go to the auction, um, and you you have you'll be much smarter buyer because you have all that information in your hand at least thirty days in advance. You, so that's what the app does. Wow! So you're gonna have all this information thirty days prior to, and in Texas, the foreclosure auctions on the first Tuesday of every month, and so thirty days ahead you'll have all the information about the property, about the owner. What um, does, is this, you know, I know uh, sometimes people save themselves in the 11th hour. Uh, does, does the app update periodically, like houses that come on and come off the, the foreclosure list? Yep, yep. That's awesome question because that is what we were, remember I was talking about the challenges we faced when we were doing tax foreclosures. So the main, one of the huge bottlenecks that, um, huge point it was it's called cancellation of properties on the 11th hour or a few days prior to the auction or even on the 12th hour so we would go prepared for um, for these properties ready to bid on the property and find the properties cancelled or some you know cancellation can happen either the homeowner paid their delinquent taxes or an investor came up and paid on behalf of the homeowner um, and now we are just there for, I mean, almost half a day and most of our properties are canceled. What we have done is we have saved our subscribers for that, um, the huge issue that, that we faced. Um, so what we do is uh, when, you, when you register, we capture your um, phone number and your email. And we'll email and text you at the same time when your property is canceled, the properties you were interested in or the property that you had put in your buckets or in your favorite. So if any of those 20 properties or 40 properties that you had put in your favorite, it gets canceled, we'll text you or email you. Do not worry about, basically we are, we are saying, okay, well, this is canceled, move on to your next other properties or some other investors has picked it up or the homeowner has already paid the delinquent taxes. Interesting. That's uh, I, I, back to removing friction. That's that's pretty nice uh, feature there, to to know. Uh, and I assume that happens in in real time as the as the county updates their records. Exactly. It's actually um, uh, almost real time. In fact, county uh, updates their records much more slowly than attorneys update their records much faster. Meaning, how it flows is that when the delinquent taxes are paid with the attorney, the attorney updates their records first, and then they update the county saying, okay, well, all these people have paid the taxes to market cancel. So by the time it reaches the county, it's almost 24 hours gone. So we capture all that information prior to that. Interesting. Okay. That's, uh, that's pretty neat. And, and, and right now it's uh, just for Harris County, Texas. Is exactly. that correct? Exactly. It's only for Harris County. Um, any, all these surrounding counties around Harris, 
Um, we saw that they, for at least the tax foreclosures, they don't have as many um, records on as many properties. They probably have, say, five to 10 a month, whereas Harris County is the third most populous state or county, I'm sorry, in the nation. So they have between three to 600 properties every month, you know, it could be Christmas or it could be July 4th, 300 to 600. And these are like commercial, these are residential, these are land, these are all these properties that people are not aware of. I mean, uh, so th- this is a huge opportunity that they're missing. And you brought something up interesting. So your app doesn't just handle single family residences. It handles, you can look at commercial properties or um like you said, raw land as exactly, well. Exactly, exactly. Anything that's on the tax sale. And, is, and is exa- exactly. Anything on the tax sale is, um, we, we, we display that, we show that. If, if all the pictures we show exact the same information that I just described, the owner information, the uh, geolocation, how much they own the property, what the bid will start with, what the value is, uh, or oh, what exemption type it is. So, for example, um, uh, and we can talk about it a little bit further, but uh, exemption is, is very important for tax foreclosures if you're picking up the property at the auction itself. I mean, if it's, a, if it's an exempt property, then um, th- there's something called a redemption period. The redemption period is two years for an exemption property, where if it's a non-exempt or if it's a, like land or something, most likely it's a non-exempt, then it's six-month redemption period. But, but we can talk about that if, if you like. No, no, absolutely. I think that's something we need to, I'd like to, to, to dive into because I know that, that changes state to state. And I mean, we're specifically talking about, you know, Harris County, Texas, but let's uh, talk about those exemptions and, the re- and, and also the, the redemption period. Uh, w- what does that mean to someone who's looking to purchase at, uh, a, a tax foreclosure auction property? So in Texas, uh, um, redemption period on exempt properties is two years. So what that means is that um, say you have a homestead, an owner has a homestead exemption, it's the primary home, and it goes for tax foreclosure, they have not paid the delinquent taxes, an investor at the auction buys, wins the auction and, and um, gets the deed of the property. The homeowner has up to two years to reclaim the property property back from the investor, but they have to pay 25% interest per year to the investor. So meaning that, uh, and and those 25% is not prorated per day. It is, for example, if it's one year and one day, it it becomes 50%. The investor, they have to pay the investor to redeem the property back. So if usually... Uh, the redemption doesn't happen um, very often uh, just because if they were not able to pay the delinquent taxes and they lost the property already, they may or may not be able to come up with the amount of the bid value uh, and be able to pay the owner at that time. So this uh, redemption, is, but, but that's something to keep in mind. But if it's an exempt property, the homeowner uh, has six months to come and redeem. And for the investor, it's a great two. I mean, it's it's a great way anyway. So either they can earn twenty five percent per year, or they get the property. That pretty much sounds like a win win. <laughs> either way you look at it, um, that's uh, that's pretty interesting. So I understand, you know, obviously they're going to protect the the homesteaded properties uh, more so than say an investment property. So if if it's an owner occupant who defaults on his tax, then he'll have two years, he or she will have two years to pay that investor back to get their property back. However, if it's, uh, let's say an investment property, and, I, and this is something I've, I've actually got coming up on. I, um, I'm happy to say that I just got, uh, I just got served papers. I'm being sued. So uh, as a, as a lender, this is really cool. I'm excited. I'll get to this later, but one of the properties that I loaned on uh, is going to the tax foreclosure auction. Uh, and unfortunately I've already gotten my money back, so it doesn't matter, but all I have to do is release the lien and then my, I'm away from it. But let's say if this goes to 
and this was a rental property, wasn't uh, an owner occupant. So if it goes to auction and let's say you, Sammy, purchased or you know, put the money up, uh, gave the, the county the money, then either I as the, the first lien holder or the uh, the owner of record would have six months to pay you back plus 25% interest what uh, in that within that six month period, or I guess would it be, it wouldn't be 12 and a half percent. He said, it's not prorated. So it would be straight up 25% within six months or the property then becomes yours uh, all out. No stops. Is that, that correct? Is cor- that is correct. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It could be uh, the one month or six month. It's still 25%. It's not prorated. That is, uh, that's very interesting and very enticing. Yeah, or yeah, either you get twenty five percent of your money on your money, or you you get the property, and the return on investment could be who knows what it could be, depending on how you know how low you get the you acquire the property for. That is uh, interesting. Okay, that's uh, yeah. I've I have been down to the county courthouse uh, years ago when I was starting off, and it, I found it to be completely overwhelming, and and I, I went down for on two different Tuesdays. And um, I, I don't want to say I got discouraged, but I guess at, at the end of the day, that's what it was because it was tons, you know, every precinct has some, uh, 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 someone standing up there and, you know, shouting out. And at least back then uh, it was, uh, it was quite a circus to say the least, but it sounds like this app really takes a lot of the, the pains and the grind out of it and, and really puts everything into your, into your fingertips, which uh, I think is cool. And go ahead and give us that website again. And this, uh, all this information will be in the show notes page uh, once this episode goes live. But uh, give us the uh, the website and and how people can get in touch with you if they have any questions. Sure, sure. Uh, the website is county c o u n t y tax t a x sale s a l e app a p p dot org, and they can get in touch with us just with uh, support at county tax sale app.org or they can email uh, my assistant on the app. So it, her name is Stephanie, Stephanie at county tax sale app.org. Um, and uh, Keith, I know you mentioned that uh, you went to uh, the uh, tax foreclosure or the county, uh, those times they were called uh, pretty much courthouse the, 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 that's where the auction used to be but they've changed that they've, they've made it a really nice uh, place now it's, got, it's in Bayou Center over on 610 and it's a re- really nice air conditioned hall it's, I mean you people have marriages over there it's, it's a beautiful exit, you know, place where you can go in and there are chairs now you can sit on. There's snacks. I mean, people can buy snacks over there. But it's it, they have really <laughs> transformed uh, the, the whole. <laughs> yes, it, it, it's it's really really nice now. What I know, people have had. They have never gone since. They have said that said that that was the last time they've gone. But now um, it, it, it's it's uh, it's a very soothing experience. I would say to go there and just just see what's what's going on. Well, then I, I'm going to have to go back because I think the first time I went was in August, which was, you know, years ago. Then it was, it was basically like under. It was it wasn't in the building, but it was just kind of like under the awning, basically. And the the houses that I was looking, I was interested in, um, they were they were paid off in the eleventh hour. So by the time I got there, they weren't even up for auction anymore. And then they had all these houses I had I'd done zero research or due diligence on. So it. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to go check it out now. If I can sit in the air conditioning and they have chairs. I mean, that's, I know that sounds kind of weird, but that's, <laughs> yeah, that's a huge improvement from uh, years ago. No, they, they have chairs and they have, uh, in fact, projectors where it shows what property uh, people are bidding on right now. And it, it shows a little bit about the property. So it's, it's a very uh, much better organized. And I think, uh, uh, Harris County is one of the few counties that have done that. Um, uh, the, uh, most of the other counties, they, they, they don't have that. I mean, they are just, ex- as you explained, I mean, in the heat, they are in the heat, they are pushing and shoving and they can't hear anything what they're bidding on and they just, they have no idea what's going on. This has become a very, very organized uh, 
the, the way that they have started to um, uh, they become very professional and what they have done uh, at least the Harris County uh, um, they have seen because they provided such a nice facility that uh, the you know more and more uh, I guess the the people that they can they, they are better informed I would say they're better informed they can hear what's going on they can say they can talk to each other and it's, it's just an amazing place to just go to if if, no, if any of your listeners have never been, I would really, and they are in, uh, you know, Harris County, I would advise them just to go and check it out. Um, it's, uh, and like I said, if, if anybody needs any information um, from that, they can contact us either uh, Stephanie at countytaxsaleapp.org or just email support at countytaxsaleapp.org. And again, we'll, we'll provide you just the information, what you need, nothing for us to sell there. Okay, that's. Uh, I, I certainly uh, am. I, I don't want you to take this the wrong way. I'm certainly not calling you a liar, but I just can't believe that a county entity, county government, has made a process smooth and easy, and take you know and made it uh, 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 easy easy for the end user. I, th- I think it's great. Maybe it, you know things are looking up for 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 governments uh, all over the place, but uh, I will definitely go uh, here soon and 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 to the, and, and just witness the the county tax zone. That might be a whole episode of just the difference in between what I saw way back when and, and how it is now. But um, one more question or uh, regarding the app uh, before I got, I got a couple of things uh, uh, kind of in, in, into mindset and whatnot, but this app is for Harris County properties, but anyone nationwide can use this. I mean, the, the information they can remotely, they don't have to be in Harris County to utilize this app or the information or to acquire the properties. Correct. Exactly. Exactly. We have we have subscribers who are all over the nation. All they're doing is they are um, they are getting all the information for the properties that they want to owners through multiple means and giving them what uh, either the tax value or whatever value that the homeowner and they agree on, and they're purchasing properties pre-auction. They, they physically do not need to be at the auction to make um, you know investment decisions or investment deals out of this. We, we have people all over the nation. That's that's great. It sounds. Uh, I'm I'm going to be logging on here shortly uh, once we once we finish uh, this this interview and, and checking it out, and then I will be going back to the auction just to see the. Uh, the air conditioned environment with project. I mean, that sounds amazing uh, to what they've done uh, with everything. So, and again, all that information on how to contact you in the apps website and everything will be on the show notes page. But I just, before I let you go, I want to have a couple of questions. I'm curious as to, as an investor, as a businessman, what books are you reading right now? What's on your coffee table? Well, I am reading Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill uh, the second time now. Um, it was written way back in 1937, uh, but what is written is still true today, and and it is uh, what I think the first few chapters talk about is uh, just about your mindset itself. It, it, you know, you know they, I don't remember which one, but uh, they, uh, Napoleon Hill talked about this person, um, Edwin Barnes. Yeah, that's, I think that's what the name he wanted to contact um, Thomas Edison and be actually a partner with Thomas Edison without having any um, financial means or the uh, knowledge or expertise to be with him. Uh, but he, um, he, he, he just changed his mind or his brain to be there with Thomas Edison, no matter what. He didn't even have the money to go to New Jersey during those days, uh, get a rail ticket to go there. So, but he just knew that he needs to be, he needs to be with him. And he did it. And he did it um, because he didn't let anybody or himself actually stop uh, his thought process. And usually that what happens in, in um, a lot of people's mind, they, they stop themselves. Either it's, it's, a, it's a bigger challenge than they thought about before they got, got started, 
or they blame it on time or they blame it on money or they blame it on resource. Um, personally, um, I am I am not from this country myself, but but coming to this country and and with with nothing, um, and then changing my mindset in in a way where um, I knew that the potential and what this country gives you is just huge. And, and you don't get that opportunities in a lot of other countries out there, no matter what you try and, and no matter who you are. Um, it's an amazing opportunity over here. I, and people just need to really, really um, have their mindset in, in, a, in, a, in the right direction. And if they do that, they have a goal in mind and they have the desire to chase that goal, they can do that. I couldn't agree with you more. And it's one of my, my favorite books that I try to read, reread periodically. Uh, it, sometimes it's not easy, but I do uh, the, the story that you mentioned about the, uh, uh, yeah, the guy wanted to work with Thomas Edison and had you know, no background, no money. And that the only thing he had was the desire and the persistence to continue. And he, he reached his goal. And I think that's um, one of the great things about, like, like you said, this country and, and real estate, you get your mind right and follow through and, you know, you, you, you basically only limit yourself. Uh, so that's one of the, I think one of the beauties of, uh, of being uh, in, in the U S uh, one of the many. So anyhow, uh, well, okay. So the, the website is county tax sale app.org or G uh, email is support at county tax apps. Sorry. Support at county tax sale app.org or Stephanie at County Tax Sale app.org. And all this information will be on the show notes page. And Sammy, I just want to say thank you for coming on today and, and sharing uh, your story about uh, your investing, but also this information about uh, your app. I have found myself becoming more and more geeky as things come out. And here I am, you know, with the podcast and everything else. So I, I really can't wait to, to, just to dive into this thing and, and to check it out. And, um, I wish you uh, I wish you all the best, sir. Thanks again for coming on. Okay, thank you so much for this opportunity. Um, you know, this is, uh, like I said, um, uh, the tools are out there and, and the opportunities are out there uh, for people to make use of them and having a great mindset and that, that just uh, will do the job. And, and I think people uh, just need to make sure what they're after. And, and they need to go get it. All righty, sir. Thank you, Sammy. Yeah, thank you, kid. All right. I'd like to thank Sammy Gupta for coming on today and sharing his time with us and a little bit of wisdom and his strategies and, and his new app. I'm a bit of a technology gadget geek, so I will be checking this out uh, very, very quickly and, and seeing just how powerful it is. And, and I'll be going to the, the, the new auction building for uh, – for the tax sale in the very near future, just to check that out and see how they've streamlined the process. So again, go to the show notes page for links and more information about County tax sale app.org. That's County tax sale app.org. Or you can email support at County tax sale app.org or Stephanie at County tax sale app.org. Well, that's going to do it for this show. Again, please go check out our sponsors and the events that are coming up in the very near future where the podcast and I will be representing at Quest, Rich, and 713 RIA. And if you please, if you have any questions, please email me at info at privatelenderpodcast.com. Until the next episode, I wish you happy and prosperous lending and investing. Take care. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Private Lender Podcast with your host, Keith Baker. For more great content and to stay up to date, visit privatelenderpodcast.com. If you enjoyed today's episode, please rate and review, and we'll catch you next time.